Hi, today we've got some new PCBs from JLC PCB, and these are some prototype PCBs for my LED driver that I'm using for the high current XHP 70.2. So let's have a look inside the box. And here are our black PCBs. Let's have a closer look. So here's the close up of the PCB, and as you can see, it all looks really nice. We've got a really nice matte finish on the board. It seems they got rid of the issue that they had on some of the boards that I'd had previously whereby the solder mass looked a little bit blotchy. This looks completely matte all over. So really nice looking board with the immersion gold finish on all of the pads. And we've got a nice crisp and clear silk screen in white on the board. So as it illustrates, we are gonna be testing out the LM3409HV LED driver. This one uses an external MOSFET. So um, to drive these higher currents, generally speaking, you're not gonna find a fully integrated controller. So we've got an external MOSFET which then extends the capability of what the controller can drive. As you can see, we've got quite a chunky um, inductor as well. And on the back of the board, there's not really much going on, just a few traces to interconnect between the parts on the board. We have got a dim input, so a PWM input so that we can control the brightness. We've got a 24 volt input for power and then the output to the LED. So a little bit of detail about the controller. We're using the Texas Instruments LM3409 and it comes in two different versions. So the standard with an input voltage range of six to 42 volts, or you can get the HV version, which extends that all the way up to 75 volts. Now this is configured as a buck regulator and it has an integrated gate driver with capability up to one amp. So you can choose the specifics of your MOSFET so that you can drive basically any LED in book configuration that you like. Now we've got these two inputs here, the I adjust and the enable. Depending on how you want to dim the LED, you can either use the enable pin with a PWM output from some other driver, or you can adjust the sense current using the I adjust pin and feed in an analog voltage here to control the brightness of the LED. Now, using the PDRM controller allows a much wider range of brightness ranges, so that's what we're using in this application. As usual, the Texas Instruments datasheet is really detailed and also gives quite a lot of examples for different configurations, as well as all the calculations that you need to calculate the various component values. So you can go through, and if you wanted to, you could take their design requirements and verify your answers against how they've calculated it and then tweak it for your particular application. Or there are just all of the equations in the earlier stages showing how to calculate the, the different component values and what they all mean. So as you can see, the schematic is very similar to the application note, just with a few tweaks on it. And we've adjusted the values for this specific application. So the 0 0.1 ohm resistor here, that is our sense resistor, and that gives us our 2.4 amp drive current. We've got a very chunky surface mount inductor here. Uh, this is about as large as you can go on surface mount inductors before you go to through hole, or by winding your own. And I was thinking about doing that, but we did manage to find one at LCSC that was ideal for this application. We've got our input from the ESP32, which is the PWM input, which goes into the enable pin on the controller. And because this controller uses cycle by cycle control at 250 kilohertz or so, we can drive this with quite a wide range of PDBM frequencies. In fact, the lower, the better, because that gives you a higher resolution on the LED drive current. And then we've got a couple of resistors here. These allow us to set the point at which this controller shuts down. And I think I've set that to around 18 volts. And it gives you an indication in the data sheet how to calculate these two values. For this application, I'm not gonna fit this resistor. This is just here so that if we wanted to, we could set the LED to be turned on and that's it. So we can use this as a general purpose LED driver as opposed to a prototype for the final application. And so we use the Solder King solder paste once again, and that all looks like it's gone very nicely. 
We've got some good solder fillets on all of the legs on that IC and it looks like it all reflowed really well. Right, so it's time to test the PCB. I've got it hooked up to my bench power supply and we're just going to test it with no load first with the current limit on. That is safe to do on a book converter. If you have a boost converter you can run into trouble with the current limit on your power supply because to regulate the voltage in the first place, especially if you've got some load capacitance, it needs quite a lot of inrush current to actually get the boost converter running. So I'm just going to set it to about 20 milliamps to start with. And we're drawing about 3 milliamps from the power supply, which seems quite reasonable. Let's just check that we've got power on the input. So 23.81. And we should see something similar on the output with no load. Yeah, so just a little bit of voltage drop there, but we are seeing an output. Next up, I'm going to connect up the DC load, and I'm just going to check that the output is actually regulating at around 2.4 amps. Okay, so we've now got the DC load hooked up in constant voltage mode, and so what that should mean is that this is set to 12 volts, it will replicate an LED with a forward voltage of 12 volts, and the current limiting should be performed by the driver board. So I'll turn on the power supply, And that doesn't look right. The power supply is current limiting. The current limit is set to 2.5 amps and we're seeing the full amount being drawn. Right, so what I've done now is I've slightly reconfigured the input. So the enable pin, which is the green wire, is connected to zero volts. So the switch mode controller should now be shut down and trying to keep the load turned off. However, as you can see, we're still drawing current in the load. I've set the load to 100 milliamps instead of constant voltage mode, so it's a little bit more reasonable. But you can see we're still getting current flowing through it. So if we have a look, if we connect the 0 volts to the 0 volt incoming and look at the voltage at the gate, you can see that is basically at 24 volts. So the controller is trying to turn off the MOSFET. However, when we look at the node where we've got the diode and the inductor, we're still getting about 24 volts flowing. So that means that for some reason, this MOSFET is still trying to conduct even when the gate voltage is high. So I'm not sure if we've got a faulty MOSFET here. But yeah, something appears to be misbehaving with that switch. That's the only explanation because our gate voltage is almost at 24 volts. So we should be seeing this turned off. So I think what we'll probably have to do is desolder this MOSFET and test it with the component tester. This is the Atlas DCA Pro. Uh, first of all, probably what we'll do is we'll just have a look at the components raw out the packet. These are from LCSC and just check they are what they say they are. If they're another component, then uh, that probably explains the issue. So let's have a look at one of these. Right, so I've got the device connected up. This is one fresh out the packet. So we should see the blue is the gate Red is the drain and green is the source. So let's have a look if that is true. I'm not sure what's happened to the screen on that. It doesn't look how it should, but you can just about read what's going on. So P channel MOSFET, red is the drain, green is source, blue is gate. So that is working properly. And actually, just looking at the schematic again, I've just realised my error. I've got this MOSFET the wrong way round, so this drain and source are the wrong way round. So what we're getting is all of the current going through the body diode and through into this node. The transistor's never actually switching on. So I'm going to have to try and fix that on this PCB. I think we can probably desolder the MOSFET and flip it on its front and temporarily just test that it still works with the drain and source flipped. So that's a little bit annoying. It was quite nicely laid out, uh, but that is why we do these prototypes. So we've still got the enable pin tied to zero volts. So when we turn on the power, we should now see that no current flows. So let's put the probes on the input here. So we should see when we get power turned on. And yeah, that's more like it. So zero current when the enable pin is tied low. Okay, so we've got the DC load set back to constant voltage mode. We may have a problem here with the two control systems fighting with each other, but we should see the constant current being achieved anyway. So we'll turn it on. And yeah, about 2.2 amps, 
but the DC load is a little bit all over the place with the voltage as you can see it's not at the 12 volts I suspect the two control loops are playing up with each other so we'll try a resistive load instead before we go on to the LED Right, so I didn't manage to find a suitable resistor, so I swapped the DC load for the Conrad DC load, and this one seems a lot happier with the output from the DC to DC converter. So sometimes the two control loops can play against each other, but everything is stable with this one. So I think we are okay to hook this up to the LED. You can see we've got a nice stable voltage. I set the DC load to a constant voltage of 13.5 volts. So everything seems all okay. Let's hook up the LED. So I've got the LED over to the side here. I don't need it in the camera because it's going to blind everything. But let's turn it on and see what happens. And yeah, so forward voltage about 13 volts. We've got a constant current of 2.25 amps. So that is looking good. It's very slightly lower than I had anticipated. I'll have to check my calculations for that sense resistor. I have a feeling that I remember putting it to the nearest value that we could actually get hold of and that meant that I did compromise on the drive current slightly but everything seems stable. What I'll probably do is just leave this running for a few minutes and just see how hot this whole PCB is getting because obviously like I said we've now lost the heat sinking for that MOSFET because the heat sink tab is now facing up in the air. Right, so it's been about 10 minutes and the temperature of that MOSFET is definitely climbing. It's a little bit warmer than I would like. It's sitting there about 56 degrees C. And so, yeah, obviously I either need to find a different MOSFET that fits the footprint that I've accidentally laid out on here, or I do need to re-lay out the PCB. But other than that, everything seems stable. What we'll just quickly also check is that the PWM input does indeed control the current. So yeah, the PWM input seems to be working nicely. As you can see, we've got nice control of the current. Very granular control there, and then we can increase it quite rapidly. All the way up to our 2.25 amps or so. So everything seems to be working fine there. We just need to sort out the problem with the MOSFET. So one of the nice things about this controller is that it allows you to drive a wide range of LEDs, especially those with very high forward voltages, so particularly those cob arrays where sometimes the forward voltage is 30 volts or maybe even 60 volts for the larger ones. Because this driver has an input voltage all the way up to 72 volts, it allows you to drive those where normally you would find it difficult to find a driver that is suitable for those kinds of voltages. So certainly one to bear in mind, don't make the same mistake as me and make sure that you get your MOSFET the correct way around. Think, remember it's a P-channel MOSFET and not an N-channel. Uh, but yeah, that's one of the things that we learn by prototyping, which is exactly why I designed this PCB. So hopefully you found the video useful. Don't forget to put your comments and everything in the comments section down below. And until next time, thanks for watching.